how's this? A pretty horrible thing to happen is to have um, your camera or your lens break on a job and uh, then to need that very lens either on that job or immediately after. Now, the latter happened to me uh, a while ago, about a month or so ago, doesn't matter. And uh, I was doing a job uh, and in some moment of klutziness, I was changing lenses and I dropped my 70 to 200 L series lens on the floor. It fell on the mount, uh, destroying the mount and in the process irreparably destroying the lens as well. There was some damage on the inside as well, which was fine. I could uh, finish the job with some of my other lenses, so it's 2470 and 50 mm, all that sort of stuff did the job. However, I had a problem. I, it was a Friday night and I came back to the studio at around 10 p.m. and I had a very urgent photograph to take. And this was a wine bottle back shot. Now, a back shot is a product shot, uh, normally on white or that is to be deep etched to a transparent background. Now you might say, what is the problem? Why didn't you just use the 2470? Well, um, there's a couple of things. Uh, one, uh, when you shoot wine bottles, you try and keep, uh, and remember this is shooting from the front, you wanna minimize any sort of vertical distortion and a long focal length helps with that. Also bottles bulge. So you wanna minimize the effect of a bottle bulge on the label because if you have a wider focal length close to the label, the bulge will seem pronounced and it might even be difficult to read the edges of the label. Whereas if with a long lens, it flattens it out a little bit and it just looks more presentable. Secondly is uh, this particular client is a regular client of mine and as they release new wines, I shoot these product shots. And often we would then take those single images and comp them into like group shots. Now, the problem is if I have one shot with a 70 millimeter focal length, for instance, and I have seven shot with 70 to 200 at 200 mil, you're gonna see it immediately. The, everything about it just seems weird. Uh, there's more bulge, uh, it, it, proportionally it just doesn't seem right and the image will not ring true even if I do the lighting exactly the same like I normally do. Even if there's no color difference, it is all gonna look a little bit strange. So I was stuck. It was Friday night and I needed to make a plan. It struck me that I actually own a bunch of zoom lenses and some of them actually in that range. The only problem was is that they a little bit old. They are vintage lenses. One in particular as I scrambled through my lenses uh, caught my eye and it was this um, boxed Canon FD 100-300 f5.6. It's an NFT lens and um, I thought well it covers the 200 millimeter zoom range. I would just need to zoom to 200 more and um, it was worth a try. I was desperate introducing the 100-300 f5.6. Now, if we take the cap off the back and we look at the serial number, which is V705, um, we can deduct that this lens was manufactured in 1981 in July, which would make this lens uh, 41 years old pretty old lady it's still in fairly good condition it's got a UV filter on but I will take that off and um, it is still in very good nick it's still very very clean um, you know, there's no fungus or any scratches that I'm aware of so this is a pretty good specimen and uh, my chances were pretty good it's now 5.6 doesn't bother me I shoot at f16 uh, to f22 uh, what I needed from this lens it needed to be sharp it needed to be as aberration free as it can be, and preferably no ghosting or strange color casts or things like this. This is one instance where I needed a vintage lens to not look vintage, but to actually look neutral, and it needed to be able to do, at least for this shot, what a lens like this does. This lens, I paid the princely sum of 500 rands for, which is about $30, more or less. This lens, quite recently, I bought for the princely sum of 35,000 Rand, 
which is more like $2,000. So it seems like a bizarre comparison, not that it's a comparison, but a bizarre comparison nonetheless, to have a $30 lens having to do the job of a $2,000 lens. Um, long story short, I was able to get the, the, the shot out, uh, keep the client happy, it all looked good. So, in order to demonstrate uh, what I did, I uh, quickly did a photograph of uh, another wine bottle. It is a very basic, simple uh, lighting scenario. I mean, it's not about the shot. The adapter that I use to put the 100 to 300 NFT on my camera is a KNF Concept uh, FD to EOS R adapter. I really, I like these KNF Concept adapters. They are sturdy, they've made good quality, and they don't influence image quality as far as I can tell. They are very good. Uh, I use the Canon EOS R, and then obviously our control will be the 70 to 200. This is a F4, um, but a very sharp lens, RF lens. And, um, and we're gonna go to uh, Camera Raw and just have a look at these images as they came out of the camera. So what we're first looking at is uh, just general feel, okay? Now, uh, obviously the cropping would not be exactly the same as I had to guess more or less if I'm at 200 on the FD lens. Um, first impressions, uh, the FD lens seems a bit brighter at F16 than the RF and somewhat greener. Now, here's something to remember, this is these lenses are uh, measured in f-stops. These are not cinematic lenses that is measured in t-stops. So uh, the f-stop just relates to the, um, the relationship between the diameter of the, the diaphragm and the length, the focal length. So that's your f-stop. A t-stop is actually a measurement of exact amount of light that gets lit through a lens. An f-stop is actually not. It's a relative, whereas a t-stop would be exactly, from lens to lens, it would be exactly the same. So it is understandable that you would have a little bit of exposure difference or light difference. Um, let's first look at the RF. Uh, let's just make sure that our optics, there are no chromatic aberration corrections or anything like that. Um, I know that Top of the bottles is normally an issue. Oh goodness, I did not clean the bottle. Just look at how dirty it is. For a client, naturally, I would go through a whole polishing procedure, which I didn't at this point. Um, there is a marginal little uh, bit of fringing, but I mean, we are at 600% magnification and it's virtually you know, impossible to see. At 100%, you know, there's nothing. It's generally sharp, I'd say. Um, yeah, I know the sharpness on this RF lens, as one would expect, is absolutely amazing uh, at f16. And yeah, top to bottom, sharp, just as one would expect. And there's no real hard color cast. We can have a look. If you look at the bottom top there, we'll see what the, the RGB readings are right in the middle, more or less. It's 162, 162, 162, which means that label is neutral. It is uh, not pure white. Uh, it is a light gray right there, but it is balanced in its RGB. Right, so that is our RF, naturally a very good performing lens. Um, now we look at the FD lens. All right, first things first, let's look at sharpness. And the sharpness would be dependent on my... Um, on my uh, focusing ability but i must say i am mightily impressed this is really sharp uh, right bottom to top we see is good sharpness right um at 100 let's see if there's any sort of color fringing yeah there does seem to be a little bit of purple fringing at the top uh, the sharpness here it doesn't seem to fall off too much but there's definitely some fringing there as well. And let's go down uh, over here. I don't see any sort of fringing. Yeah, maybe a little bit of green there. Let's look at these type of highlights. Yes, we do see a little bit of fringing, but I'm glad to report I see no ghosting whatsoever. Uh, that is a good sign. And the sharpness is impressive. Now let's look at um, color rendition. If there is a right in the middle, more or less there 
it is 177178177, which means green is one unit more. Let's see if I move it around, if it stays like that. Yes, green, uh, red 180, green 182, blue 181. Uh, on the more white side, red 205, green 208, uh, blue 205. So we can definitely see that this lens is in fact about anything between one and three um, units more green than was the uh, RF lens, which is in fact very neutral. Um, let's see if there's anything else that one can see. Our framing is completely abysmal. And uh, so yeah, that is my quick little comparison, a quick disclaimer as well. I do not follow uh, like recognized scientific method. You know, I'm sure there are review channels that has all that sort of, this is just the anecdotal um, re creation of what happened to me at the time and how I was able to get out of that situation. So hopefully you agree with me that um, this Canon FD lens or the NFD lens, however you want to put it, really, really does perform well under this particular set of circumstances. What are some things we need to remember? It is still a vintage lens. It's still a manual lens. Uh, it is old. Um, I have a good copy. You might pick up a copy that is not so well looked after and might not perform exactly the same. The point we're trying to make here is, you know what, in some circumstances, a vintage lens can really help you out. And not when you're necessarily looking for a vintage vibe, but actually for something neutral to um, pick up where your RF or your modern lens left off. So like, subscribe, do all that sort of stuff. I'll leave links down below. You can check these out. And again, thank you so much for watching this video. It's something a little bit different, uh, but I will see you in the next one.